Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 486 for the first of Nissan in a regular year. First of all, happy Rosh Chodesh. So Nissan, a big month. This is the month when we have Pesach, the holiday of Passover coming up. So I wish you all a wonderful month with lots of revealed blessings to come. And today we're going to begin our discussion by talking a little bit about parenting, about raising children. Um, So there's countless books that have been written about parenting, about being a good parent, about how to raise a child. And a lot of these books really focus on the idea of really giving the child what they need, how to listen to your child attentively. Uh, Gabor Mate talks about the difference between love versus att- attunement and how a lot of children might receive a lot of love from their parents, but they don't necessarily receive attunement and how you, you, know, you really need to be attuned to your child and listen to what the child wants. Who is this child? And indeed, this is a very true thing. This is something that's really real and, and very true. Beginning from when a, a, when, a, when a child is a baby, you know, I have a friend who just recently had a baby and they were saying, I don't know, you know how accurate this is, but they were saying that, that the husband is so attuned to this child that when the baby cries, then he can immediately tell what kind of cry it is. Is this a cry of hunger? Is this a cry of discomfort? Is, does the baby have a diaper? Is the baby tired? What's going on? So that's a very, very high level of attunement. And this is a beautiful thing. You know, as the child gets older and is able to express their needs verbally, this is even greater. This is even better. But now I'm going to throw a wrench into all of this discussion around parenting. And I'm going to say that there's another aspect of parenting that isn't necessarily focused on that much from what I can see. And that's the aspect of parenting where it comes to the parent being a good role model for the child. Because as much as Yes, you know, it's, a, it's really important to be attuned to the child, give the child what they need and listen to the child and all of those things. There's another thing that's going on with children and that children are sitting there and they're observing their parents as they grow up. They're observing who their parents are. They're studying their parents. Their parents are literally the model for their lives, for uh, authority figures, for love, for so many things in their lives, which is why really in order to be a good parent, the most important component one could argue is actually just to be a good person, to be a, a, a role model yourself. And now we're going to tra- translate all of this into our service of God, into our relationship with God, because we know that God is called our father. We refer to God as our parent and, uh, and how we relate to God really has a lot of similarities in terms of the way a child relates to a parent. So on the one hand, as we were saying, in terms of parenting, there's this idea of attunement. There's this idea of listening to what the child wants. And really a child should be encouraged to ask for what they want, especially as they become more verbal, more communicative and all of that. And in terms of our service of God, what this translates to is the service of prayer. That when we, when we pray to God, whether it's from a sitter or whether we're praying to God in our own language, speaking to God in our own language, this is a very beautiful thing. And God loves when we do this. And in fact, prayer has the capacity to transform reality. Just like, you know, a child who asks the parents for different things, assuming that these are reasonable requests, the parent's going to be more than happy to fulfill these requests. And this is how it works with God, is that when we pray, the prayer is, there's like, there's so many books, so many things that have been written about. The, the altar of it himself in the Tanya talks about the power of prayer and how prayer has the capacity to literally transform our physical reality that we live in. Nevertheless, there's a limitation to prayer. And that's what we're really going to focus on today. The limitation of prayer is that it's based on us. It's based on our own understanding, our own subjective 
experience, our own subjective emotions, thoughts, all of these kind of things. There's another way to connect with God that's a lot deeper, a lot more essential, we could say. What's that? That's the study of Torah. And just like, you know, going back to the parenting example, Lahavdil, just like, you know, again, good parenting, sure, you know, you want to, if you want to connect with your parents, you ask them for what you need, you try to connect with them in that way. But there's another aspect of being a child and what a child can really get, the, a way that a child can really connect with the parent in a much deeper way is by observing the parent, by, uh, by studying the parent, by trying to, to really grasp and analyze what the parent is doing and why they're doing what they're doing. Hopefully, if this is a healthy parent and a healthy individual, then the child will gain a lot this way. And this will be just a very intimate way to bond with the parent. When it comes to God, we have no doubt that God is a good parent, right? God is the ultimate parent. God is the ultimate truth, he's called. And so this is why uh, learning Torah study actually has something over and above uh, the aspect of prayer. So this is the this, this section that we're going to be learning today is actually the conclusion of this chapter 37 that we've been looking at, that we've been studying for a while, for uh, a number of days, where we've been talking about this like interplay between mitzvahs and Torah study, what's more important, what takes precedent, all of that. Today, we're also going to bring up the idea of prayer. And this conclusion, which I think is really interesting to this whole chapter, is that even though we've spoken about how you know, how, yes, the whole purpose of the world is the mitzvah, is to make this world into a dwelling place for God. There is something about Torah study that is really, really profound, that is really deep, that's really essential, that nothing else can touch. And that's the aspect of truth. That's when, you know, when we learn Torah, we're not just connecting with God based on our own emotions, based on our own feelings and our own desires and wants. We're connecting with God on a much more essential level. We're connecting with God's wisdom himself, which is an, which is one and unified with him. So it's, so it's, there's, there's something a little more pure about it, we could say. So with that being said, let's get into the text and see how the Alter Rebbe explains this. For context, again, we're concluding chapter 37 today of Likud Hamarim. And the Alter Rebbe begins today, and he references yesterday's portion where we spoke about this idea of the illumination that comes down when a person uh, studies Torah. And the Alter Rebbe tells us that this this drawing, this influence, and this illumination that comes about when a person studies Torah which is an illumination that is stemming from, it's rooted in the Or Ein Sof Baruch it's rooted in the infinite light uh, of God. So it, what is this light? This light is what we know of as the Shekhinah. The Shekhinah is like sort of like known as like the feminine aspect of God. It's the indwelling nature of God. And a, another way to understand it, I mean, there's a lot to be said about the Shekhinah, is that it's also called, that another term for the Shekhinah is it's called Knesset Israel, which is like the source of all the souls of Israel, the community of Israel. It's a Kabbalistic term for the source of all of the souls of Israel. And the way that this happens um, when a person studies Torah, like how is it that this illumination comes down when a person studies Torah is because when we talk about studying Torah, what's the term that we use? Like when we say that, you know, a person is reading from the Torah, we say kriyata Torah. Like if you go uh, to Shul, you know, and you hear like somebody is like in Yiddish, we say leaning, you know, the person's leaning. But um, in Hebrew, we say kriyata Torah. The, and the word kriya means to read, but it also means to call. So that's another translation of the word. A lot of words in Hebrew have like dual translation. One way we can uh, inter we can translate the word kore is to read, but another way is to call. So what this means basically, when we understand it in this way, is that when we say that a person is kore batorah, like if a person is reading, so to speak, from the Torah, or they're also calling to Torah. So the, the Torah, meaning that they're calling out to God. And what the ultra explains this as, it's just like, if you think about like, let's say a person is calling to their friend, like let's say you walk down the street and you see a friend of yours um, down the street and you call out to the, to your friend. Or let's say a child calls out to their father uh, to come to him and not leave him alone, God forbid. So it's like, let's say, you know, think about these kids. Sometimes they have separation anxiety when they're sent to preschool for the first time, or let's say they're uh, about to go into what they perceive to be a scary situation. They call out to the parent. They don't want to be left alone. They want their parent to stay with them. And this, this calling out, this is what we can liken it to when we read the Torah, when we learn Torah. And now the Altar Rebbe brings a verse from Tehillim to 
support and this idea and also to explain it a little bit further. This is from Tehillim chapter 145 verse 18 where it says, Korov Hashem emet. God is near to all who call him, to all who call him in truth. So the, the ultra is going to show here that there's something about Torah um, that is, we can say is synonymous with the word truth. And this is actually taken from the Jerusalem Talmud, this teaching, um, and also from, and also in the Babylonian Talmud, in Brachos, page 5b, the Jerusalem Talmud, it's in Rosh Hashanah 3 8, where there's this idea that en emet el Torah, there's no truth except for Torah. So true truth is Torah, really. So meaning to say that, uh, you know, what is truth? Truth is God, God, right? God is the ultimate truth. And so God, truth, and Torah, if we're saying that all of these things are synonymous, so when we read Torah, when we learn Torah, we're basically calling out to God, we're calling out to truth. And now the ultra contrast contrasts this with a very interesting thing of a person who, instead of learning Torah, you know, one way of connecting to God is learning Torah, like as we've been describing. But what about somebody who just calls out to God in like a fatherly way and says like, father, father, you know, Abba, Abba in Hebrew. So this, um, this is a different way of calling out to God. And this is a type of way of calling out to God that's like uh, prayer. That's, that's what the altar was referring to is prayer. So we spoke about this in the introduction um, about this idea, this contrast between prayer and between Torah study and how they're both definitely different ways of connecting with God. And prayer definitely has its place. Prayer is definitely a very, very powerful thing. Um, but there's something about learning Torah that's even more truthful, more essential than prayer, because prayer is coming from a subjective place within ourself. You know, again, we likened it to a child who is calling out to the parent and telling the parent what they need, which is really great and everything. And that's, that's definitely a way of connecting with the parent. But then there's a way of connecting with the parent in a more essential way, connecting with the parent on the parent's terms. And that's more about, you know, uh, Torah study and reading the Torah. And the ultra but brings a citation to support this idea. This is from Yeshayahu chapter 64, verse six, where it says, There is none who calls by your name. So meaning to say the prophet, Yeshayahu, he was very specific. He didn't say that there was nobody that calls to God, but he says there's nobody that calls to God by his name, meaning to say that there was like a certain truthfulness that he felt that was lacking in people's calling out to God at that time, that it wasn't, it, it was lacking in that Torah element to that. So I guess it's like people were praying to God, but they were doing it from within themselves, you know, based on their own emotions and feelings versus not focusing so much on Torah, you know, and like having that Torah orientation. Uh, it seems to be saying. And then the ultra but concludes here that he says that anybody who really meditates upon this and really thinks about this, uh, this is going to cause them to draw upon themselves a great feeling of awe when they learn Torah, as well, as was explained above in chapter 23. So you can go back and reference chapter 23 if you'd like. Basically, chapter 23 is when we spoke about that idea, this whole idea that about how the mitzvahs are the limbs and organs of God versus the Torah is the will and wisdom of God and how the, you know, and how there's something really very like uh, superior to studying Torah because we tap into that and how it is that studying Torah, having this awareness really is going to bring a person to a state of awe of God when they realize what's going on when they study Torah. So that's the end of the section for today. And that's the end of the chapter for today. And we're going to move on tomorrow when we uh, move on to a new chapter, chapter 38. I will speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzhak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow. And until then, have a great day.